Your success may be intimidating to other people. Case in point, Vanessa Cross from 1,000 Pound Best Friends. Vanessa's killing it. Yeah. Your skinny are melting. You I look mean, amazing. go home. Who are you? I don't know. You're not my best friend. Whenever we see you, it's like you're smaller and smaller, girl. Good. Do you know how close you are? I'm getting there. When we last left Vanessa, her hard work had just gotten her approved for weight loss surgery. And when this season picked back up, we find her working extremely hard and crushing her goals. I've been pushing myself to every limit I can push. This girl is putting in so much work that the weight is just melting off her. Which, if you watch these shows, you know that this type of attitude and this hard work it's a rarity. But what happens when one member of the group is doing extremely well while everyone else is sort of lagging behind? Today we're discussing 1,000 pound best friends and the concept of envy when it comes to behavior change. It's not something we've ever talked about before, but I think most of us experience either A, succeeding at something major, maybe lost weight, got a promotion, your life is suddenly a little bit better and you are a little bit different. And some of the people in your life just don't react the way you expect them to. Some of them might stop stop talking to you or make snide comments. Some people may even try to sabotage you. Really weird stuff can happen in your relationships when you start to succeed. Or B, maybe a friend or a loved one, maybe you start watching them succeed at something. Instead of feeling good for them, you start feeling some type of way and you're like, wait, why am I feeling like this? I should be happy for my friend, right? We all know these feelings and on either side, they don't feel great. And the situation in 1000 pound best friends is pretty much exactly this. Okay, so so first let's establish just how much Vanessa has actually changed because it's not just like her weight, it's a whole lifestyle thing. And if you're her friend, there's no missing that this girl is a changed person. And then we'll discuss her best friend's reactions, the concept of envy and the positive and negative ways it can affect us. But before we get into it, a message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Blinkist. 2023 is the year to become the person you would like to be and Blinkist is here to guide you. This year, I'm working hard to become a better content creator and to be less of a perfectionist. So I can put out more videos for you. With Blinkist, you can quickly find the most powerful insights delivered in bite-sized content called Blinks. There is a wide variety of content with 27 different categories to explore. With Blinkist, I found this blink of everybody writes. Writing is a huge part of creating content and I spend a lot of my days writing. The real book is 320 pages and would take forever to read. But in just 11 minutes, I learned five or six different useful tips that I can put to use right away in my script writing. I think it's cool that you can both read or listen to Blinks. So it's not quite an audiobook and not quite an ebook. And the content really gets directly to the point. It's really a unique type of content. You can now share your Blinkist premium plan with a friend with the new feature, Blinkist Connect. At no additional cost, invite a second account to join your plan and get all the benefits of Blinkist Blinkist Premium. Click the link to start your seven day free trial and get 25% off a Blinkist Premium membership. Thank you to Blinkist for sponsoring today's video. 304 pounds. I cannot believe it. I really can't. You're down almost 100 pounds since surgery. Congratulations. <laughs> Vanessa lost over 200 pounds in total and is still rapidly losing weight. And yes, she's gotten weight loss surgery, but her results have really come down to her commitment and effort toward changing her life. This season, practically every clip we see of Vanessa, she has this huge smile on her face. She's clearly so proud of herself and what she's been able to accomplish. There's nothing in this world I've wanted more than to lose weight. 304 today, people. No matter how hard and how trying it's been, I haven't given up. Now I see why I didn't. <laughs> He's so cute. I was always the fat, dumpy caterpillar just going around like, now I get to be the beautiful butterfly, open up and spread my wings. Anyway, previously, Vanessa was not only the biggest girl in the group, but she had zero desire to change her habits in any way, shape or form. In fact, within the group, she'd probably be the first one to order takeout. Can you order taco salads without the shell? Of course. What kind of meat would you uh, like? Gr grilled chicken. Why are you not eating? Right, let me get two of your spicy chicken sandwiches with the fries and drink. Two of the regular non-spicy combos, a large jalapeno popper, and a large mozzarella stick. Two deluxe bacon cheeseburger meal. A bucket of tenders, side of mashed potatoes and coleslaw. Is the lemon cake, you buy the whole cake or is it a slice? Okay, let me get one of them. Thank you. It's probably gotta be particularly shocking for everyone in your immediate circle when you're the person they never thought in a million years would be crushing it. 
Like you were the person who was lagging behind. You were the person that they least expected to completely change your life. And then all of a sudden, you're like a different person. The fact of the matter is, sometimes people do use you as a comparison point to make themselves feel better. And when you're no longer that person, it doesn't feel good for them. It's a very uncomfortable experience. For some reason, for some people, when someone is winning, it feels like it takes away from them. So when Vanessa invites all of her friends over for dinner and goes out of her way to make the meal 100% healthy. Just all healthy skinny bitch stuff. <sighs> Are you gonna fries? I know, no. We got a little chicken, veggies, a raw cauliflower salad. Like this is night and day for Vanessa in like six months time. Is this eating healthy? Yes. I consider this eating healthy. Eating healthy, that doesn't always mean that you're eating something nasty. And I've learned that if I can season it, make it taste good, then you don't miss your fat foods. Most of the time. And it's not just her weight, it's Vanessa's actions, it's her words. Everything she's doing demonstrates her commitment to her new lifestyle. I will be 180 pounds within a year. I hope. And this is clearly affecting her best friends who are also trying to succeed at the same thing and wish they were in her position. Who are you? I don't know, you're not my best friend. I'm very extremely proud of Vanessa, but there's an insy teensy kind of bit of me that is super jealous in the fact that I wish I was still at that phase, the honeymoon stage. Megan is Vanessa's best friend and they've been bonding over their shared weight struggles since they were kids. And Megan, there's been so many times that you were the only reason that I woke up the next day Please because me you cry. gave me hope, you gave me strength. We actually met the day I found her in the bathroom being bullied and saved her ass. Me and her just started talking and she was like, do you want to come and sit down and eat lunch with me? And I'm like, sure, let's go. In the first season, Megan was in Vanessa's current position. She had just had weight loss surgery, just lost over 100 pounds, and was probably at that point the most successful person in the group. She was the one everyone was looking up to and she was also the person pushing everybody else to make healthy changes in their lives. Megan's even the one who originally convinced Vanessa to start going to see Dr. Proctor when she had no desire to do so. I love I love you very much and I love me, but I'm not doing surgery. I'm not gonna have surgery. You could go with me. <laughs> what the? Why would I go? I want this to be a journey, a lifestyle change for the both of us. It's about not dying. But when we meet Megan in this season, she's totally fallen off track. You can really tell from her words and her actions that she's just not mentally in the same place anymore. I feel like a major failure, but I'm willing to do anything to feel better. Now, even if we didn't have clips of Megan blatantly saying that she feels a bit jealous of Vanessa, we could predict that she might feel envious based on the nature of envy and how it works. Aristotle said envy was pain at the sight of another's good fortune, stirred by those who have what we feel we ought to have. And we can see the signs of envy in Megan in season two. But you just had it and you're like a honeymoon stage. You're gonna get to where you wanna be. And you two are fixing to have surgery. I've had it. It's pretty much over for me. As a more proper definition, envy defined is the personal pain caused by the desire for the advantages of others. Now, according to psychologists, you're apparently likely to feel the emotion of envy if two conditions are met. One, someone possesses something that we don't have, duh, obvious. Two, we must desire that thing for ourselves. If somebody has something that we don't have, but we don't want it at all, then we're not gonna feel envy because we don't care. <laughs> and there's one more thing that psychologists agree that makes envy much more likely. And that's if that person who has the thing that we want is similar to ourselves in some way. In Megan's case, Vanessa is her lifelong best friend. So the position is very much so, I guess, ripe for envy. They go to the same doctor, got the same surgery, they're the same age, everything is the same, but they're having completely different outcomes. And suddenly her best friend situation, her best friend's hard work, her success becomes this unfortunate reminder that she is not where she wants to be in her life. But I feel like the weakest link. Weighing in makes me feel like a big fat failure. The scale 
for me represents failure. Envy can turn another person's success into feelings of inferiority, frustration, and if left unchecked, even feelings of hostility and resentment. And these negative emotions are maybe partially why Megan freaks out when Vanessa tries to get everyone to step on the scale together. When do we start? Today, right now. Okay, sounds good to me. I'm not Wait, getting what? on a scale. That's you what you're thinking. Hey, no scales for me. I'm not doing it. It's just us. There's no secret that I'm the biggest what? out of Different all of us. If I'm gonna get on there, then you're gonna get on there. Well, you can swallow this. Swallow I'm not swallow doing it. it. Show your determination to you and your determination. I don't want to do it. Take no answer. You have to lose weight or you're gonna die. Fit. You told me the I'm, same I'm thing. I'm done. I'm done. You told me the same thing. You I'm said if I don't lose weight, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. In the worst case scenario, according to psychologists, envy can become malicious and undermine our relationships. Malicious envy can turn into a strong desire to sabotage or bring down that friend's success in some way. Or it can lead to withdrawal from and avoidance of the friendship slash relationship in general. I personally have one friend who just has no desire to see me anymore. I mean, maybe we've just grown apart or maybe she just doesn't like me or whatever, but... We used to have an amazing time together and we grew up obese together and like all of our inside jokes are about being obese. <laughs> I actually don't know how I would have made it through that period of time without someone who could really relate on all the same levels. But at the same time, a lot of our relationship was based on going out to eat together, going out to eat large quantities of foods together because we both love food. <laughs> and I don't know for sure, but that is the vibe that I get because there was actually a time, I don't think I've ever told you guys, but when I was younger, I did lose a substantial amount of weight. I think, I don't know if it was 70 or 80 pounds, but it was a substantial amount of weight. And at that period of time, she flat out refused to see me. Like she just, she told me explicitly that's why she didn't want to see me. And she only agreed to see me again when I gained all that weight back. So I think that's why, maybe not, maybe she'll see this and be like, what the fuck? But <laughs> that's where I'm at. But I feel lucky because that's the worst I've dealt with. Like some mystery where I'm like, is that why? Whereas a lot of people have dealt with way crazier stuff just because they've succeeded at something. People lose friendships, they deal with straight up sabotage, people trying to sabotage their results. Sometimes this stuff even comes from family members. Like you wouldn't expect that you getting your shit together would negatively fracture your relationships, but sometimes that is exactly what happens. Let me know what you guys have dealt with in the comments. I'm super interested to read whatever you've gone through because I'm sure it's a lot. In Megan's case, so far she's not avoiding Vanessa. She's not being malicious. I don't know if it'd be fair to call it malicious envy in this scenario. Any sort of maliciousness seems to be more so directed to herself. That it's only gonna take one small word, a text, somebody saying something bad about her clothes or saying a little something positive about me that'll set her off and send her back to her old ways. You Rather than directing any negative feelings toward Vanessa, it's possible that Megan might just direct them internally and begin to spiral. And her friends are all concerned about this exact situation because she seems to be quite sensitive to that kind of thing. Why go and get on the scale just to feel like you're a loser, you're a failure, so I don't feel the need to go in. But envy does not always have to be a bad thing. Case in point, Ashley. Whenever we see you, it's like you're smaller and smaller, girl. It's so crazy, and, but it's motivating. Megan and I, we're kind of in the same boat. Her weight loss has kind of started to slow. Same thing with me. She had weight loss surgery several years ago and never managed to get to Vanessa's level of success. I think she lost about 60 pounds. But then I stopped doing what I needed to do and gained it back plus some. And now she's in the process of requalifying for surgery by trying to lose 30 pounds. I'm willing to try anything that will get me over the this kind of slump I've been in to get these last few pounds lost so that I can be approved for surgery. So again, we have a situation where very similar life circumstances. I think these guys went to the same high school together, although I don't think they were like best friends. Similar life circumstances, same doctor, everything, and then very, very, very different outcomes. On top of that, between seasons, Ashley and Vanessa have basically swapped positions. Over. I'm the littlest. I'm the, now the biggest bitch. Oh, I'm still fat. For the past couple years, I've been the biggest of the four. So I feel devastated for Ashley because I know for a fact that, that it hurts her heart 
to see these numbers and come to the realization that now she's probably the biggest of the crew. So researchers have discovered that envy is not always a bad thing. So-called benign envy is all the same feelings as regular envy, minus like the resentment and the other one that's mean toward your friend. <laughs> but the major difference is that benign envy motivates a person to address the discrepancy via self-improvement, whereas malicious envy does not. In other words, envy can be a powerful motivator. You get those feelings, you realize, okay, wait, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. My friend is, and they're having success. What can I do about it? Recognizing these feelings can be the first step to becoming motivated to wanting to change it. And I feel like the difference between the positive and negative forms of envy is something like malicious envy. That should be me. Benign envy. That could be me. If we're paying attention, envy can wake us up. It can warn us that we're not doing what we should be doing. Acting as an alert to the fact that there's something that we want that we're not putting in enough work to get at this moment in time. Unpleasant emotions usually serve a purpose. Okay, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this story before <laughs> or any part of it, but basically right before I started making major changes in my life, I was really stuck. Like, not just with my weight, with everything. Everything was going really, really badly. And one of the most symbolic representations of how bad everything was going was where I was living. <laughs> There's no other way to put this. I was living directly above a crack den. That's literally people would come and do crack on the steps that went to my room. Like I had some of those fire escape steps and people were literally It was, it was crack and it was heroin. <laughs> I can't even just, yeah. Bring it, bring it on. And at first I thought it was like entertaining and interesting and I had cool stories when I went to work. Oh, don't be crazy. But then very quickly, it just became this like constant reminder of where I was at in my life. Crazy stuff would happen living so close to uh, the action. And at that time in my life, I can recall feeling envious a lot. Like whenever my friends or even my family had good news, I would feel bad immediately. And then I'm feeling bad because I'm, you know, feeling bad. And then I'm also feeling bad because I feel like such an asshole for not feeling good for my friends. And then it's this thing where you not only feel inferior, but you also feel like a terrible person because, you know, you're supposed to feel happy for your friends when good things happen to them. So yeah, universally uncomfortable experience can be a good thing. Also, one 2015 study stated that three quarters of people admitted to being envious of someone that they were close with in the last year. So yeah, if you're feeling bad about this emotion, you don't need to. Just don't let it become the whole one where you're like sabotaging because that's that's pretty, that's pretty bad. <laughs> anyway, back to Ashley and Vanessa. For them, they end up becoming closer because of it. Ashley starts pushing herself more and the two of them start spending more time together, setting goals together and hitting the gym together. From everything that I've read, part of the emotional element of benign envy is that if someone has similar life conditions to you is in your life and they've achieved something, it shows that you can probably do it too. They're similar to you, they're your friend, Therefore, boom, that means you can do it too. Now, what about the differences? Why might Ashley react with a sort of positive motivational type of envy? So that's like motivation for me to keep pushing. And Megan be debilitated by it and make her just feel worse and spiral and isolate herself. That I can do that and see the chair. Just right there. Rub it in. Besides just general personality differences between the two girls. I think a key factor in whether someone is motivated or not is whether they feel they are capable of achieving the same thing. I've been in a pretty dark place since my visit with Proctor. With Megan, for example, in the last season, where we left her off with the bariatric surgeon, she didn't meet whatever goal. And I thought that the doctor said something to her at that point that was extremely dangerous. The last time I was in Proctor's office, his words literally struck me to the core. You are one of the less successful people that I've seen to this point. When I heard that, I thought to myself, you have just told this girl what she heard from you was that she's the biggest failure you've ever met. The literal worst you've ever seen. That's what you just told this person. And I was thinking to myself at the time, like, I really feel like that statement is going to mess with her head big time. You tell someone like Ashley or Vanessa that and it might motivate them because they know that they can do better. 
they fundamentally believe in themselves. But you tell someone like Megan that and it has the potential to shatter them. Because someone like this, a lot of their issues stem from the fact that they've always viewed themselves as the biggest failure in the world anyway. And part of the reason they're failing and not fully committed to their changes is because they, they try and make all these changes from the place of the person who is a huge failure. They approach their struggles the way a failure would and they expect that from themselves. And that is where the issues begin. Obviously I'm not a therapist, but I know enough about behavior change to know when I see it, a tough love does not work on everyone. It really doesn't work if the person already feels like a huge failure. I've been on the edge of a cliff for quite a while. I feel like a major failure. I'm kind of spiraling out of control at this point. Tough love can definitely motivate some people and they actually need to hear it and it lights a fire for them. But for other people, it just makes them feel like their situation is as hopeless as they always suspected it might be anyway. Fast forward to this season, we meet Megan. She's almost like a different person. If I'm not where I think I should be, why bother going in there just to hear a lecture? I'm surprised that Megan's even upset about this. Honey, me and this girl have seen each other's booties, titties, and everything. We've seen each other butt booty naked. A normally sweet woman is defensive and sensitive and she stopped going to therapy, she stopped weighing herself, she stopped trying. This was like my prediction, my thinking, and then we got to episode three of the season and Dr. Proctor literally realized what went wrong and that he had used the wrong approach. Maybe my approach with her was not what was gonna be most effective with her. I talked about this before, but the most basic theory of motivation equals value times expectancy. The value of the goal plus the degree to which you think this goal is achievable to you is how motivated you will be to attempt to try and change it. It's not the only aspect of motivation, but it is definitely a, a big piece. This is another one of these shows, like I only started watching it for the channel, but now I'm completely sucked into it. <laughs> Compared to TLC shows, for me though, this one feels different. It is so motivational and sweet and you root for these girls so much and they are actually making such an effort. Like you don't always watch one of these shows and get people who really, really, really want to change. But this show is literally for women trying to change their life and that's kind of my thing. So I'm super into it. If you haven't watched it, I recommend it. It actually is really, really good and it's it's a good time. Super stoked to see where Vanessa takes things. She is absolutely crushing it and Ashley is well on her way as well and I'm sure Megan can turn things around. There you go. We do that for fun. Can I do that one more time?